Pat McNamara, welcome to the show, man. Hey, thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for coming on. I was just uh, I was just on Instagram. I was looking over your dude stuff videos. They are absolutely yeah. awesome, man. Bro, that was an epiphany that I had one night that has taken off like a firestorm, man. I mean, it has blown up. Yeah, just backstory on that. I was um, we had three appliances go out at once, mm -hmm. and my wife was shopping online for appliances, and she stopped found a set of four. You know, the so the microwave, the, the the oven, the dishwasher, and the refrigerator. I said, ah, let's let's do it because one of the other ones going to ship the bed pretty soon too. And she said, yeah, we could have so and so uh, installed. <laughs> and I didn't really crap to myself. I was like, Rebecca. I'm a basic dude, man. I can do that. <laughs> there's, you know, there's things that a basic dude should be able to do. And she was like, really? I said, yeah, man, I can do, I can do all the guy things. And then I started thinking about it. And I was like, you know what? I bet there's a lot of guys out there who, who can't do basic dude stuff. And I started generating a list. And before I knew it, I had three pages full of just things that I think guys should be able to do. Yeah, that's, it, it's so important because I think more and more guys are growing up without that stuff. And, uh, you know, one of the things that, that benefited me, uh, aside from being in the military, but uh, when I was a kid, I, I didn't have a dad or anything like that. I went to work in a hardware store. And oh, perfect. From working there, I learned about plumbing, hardware, uh, uh, lumber, fertilizer, everything. And it was like yep. one of the best educations I ever got in my life. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, too. Like, um, so I, you know, I was born in the 60s and did my growing up in the 70s. And the beauty of that, growing up in that, in that day and age, is we were bored out of our minds a lot, which meant we had to invent shit to do. You know, and we had to figure it out. I mean, I have a couple, I own a couple Generation Z kids, and they have never, ever, ever been bored. They've always, and you know, am I partially to blame? Hell yeah, I am. Mm -hmm. But they've always had electronics and TV and cable, and they've always known how to swipe right, and they have never been bored. So, all Friday, I can't wait. I'm going to pick my kids up. They have a half day of school, and my son's 16. Uh, and I'm going to give him a class on changing a tire. Uh, because, I mean, before you drive, you should know how to change a tire. I, mean, I bought my first car when I was 15. It, it, I couldn't even drive yet. So I'm looking forward to that. He doesn't know yet, but uh, I, think he'll, I think he'll dig it, you know. I think he'll really uh, get into it. I'm just going to talk him through step by step. I'm just going to sit in an easy chair. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a huge thing because people don't just – people think just about the car – they don't think, okay, what if I get stuck on the road for like 10 hours? Because we had that happen here a couple of weeks ago on, on Thanksgiving. I live near the mountains out here in California, and people got mm -hmm. stuck on the pass for eight hours without yeah. food, without blankets, in, in the snow, mm -hmm. and they were, they were just stuck there. And, and people were getting hypothermia, had to be rushed out of there and things like that. And it's just stuff people don't think about. You know, and it's, I, I have a saying, we don't, we don't plan to fail, but we fail to plan. And when right. we do get it, we get experience. Experience is something we get shortly after we need it. You know, um, I have stuff in my cars. I mean, and it's not cluttered. I mean, but it's, you know, food, water, provisions, first aid, uh, those kind of things. Uh, um, and then, you know, jumper cables, fix a flat, uh, tire plugs. And it's not just for me, it's, it's um, so I can help somebody else get out of the bind too. I mean, uh, I, will, I never want to relinquish an opportunity to be Batman, even if it is on a small scale. <laughs> that's, your, that's your favorite superhero, right? Yeah, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, you know, we talked a little bit about your Instagram. You created this amazing platform out there that between physical culture, dude stuff, uh, as the other one you do, the director of your own uh, private yep. personal t personal protection agency, lots mm -hmm. of tips up there. Can you can you just give us a quick synopsis of your background? I'm sure, pretty sure most of our audience knows who you are, but a, a quick synopsis of your background uh, from your time in the military up till to what you're doing now. Yeah, so I, was, I did 22 years. It was all special ops time. Uh, 
was fortunate in that it was SF Baby to uh, 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 an SF group to a couple Cold War jobs. And then um, when the uh, Cold War stuff, I, I went to the unit selection and I was at the unit for 13 years. I retired in 05. S started working under a corporation, you know, I was picking low hanging fruit coming out of the military. And then it, fortunately I ran into some bad luck and I got laid off, which was a good thing, you know, because that helped me un reestablish myself, who I am and, and, and um, gave me an opportunity to, to uh, journey in a different direction. So I, Built TMAX in 2010, which is basically a training company, uh, tactical. Tra I, I, I say I like to train badassery, so I teach uh, mm -hmm. shooting, fighting, close quarter battle, combat strength training, that kind of thing. And I've been working under that ever since. And then, you know, I've got a couple other businesses as well. So I'm busy, busy, busy. That's awesome. And, you know, you were in the, in the military, interesting time. You know, over 22 years, the world changed a whole lot. You went from mm -hmm. the Cold War to you know the 90s to the war on terror and I, yep. I was looking at a picture of you on instagram in front of the berlin wall it was, as it was falling down you had a mullet and you had the, yeah. the 80s mustache going on and things like that you, you i mean what was that transition like what was it like being in during that time period i uh, you know what <clears throat> When you're there in the moment, you I guess you really don't think about it. You know, it, it, it just, well, here's another component and portion of my job in another day in time. You really think, I started thinking about it more when people were at, you know, once I retired and people asked yeah. me about my career. And I'm like, damn, man, I had a pretty badass cool career. I was freaking extremely lucky, you know, to have been a part of, you know, peacetime army, Cold War. I mean, uh, all of the cloak and dagger stuff in the 90s, the Chiwat in, in the early uh, 2000s. So, uh, you know, I was uh, just very, very fortunate. So during, you know, while it was going on, you, you never, I never really thought about it. Just day-to-day -day activities, another job, another time, another shithole in the world and, and uh, rock and roll. But yeah, it's, it's fun to reflect. I'm not one of these rest on your laurels yeah. dudes. Uh, I hate those guys, but um, but it's neat to reflect, especially when people are interested, especially if they've never been a part of it. You know, if they've been maybe a civilian their whole life and uh, they were interested in military history and, and special ops and stuff like that, it's, it's nice to talk to them about it because uh, I could see how interested they are, you know, and it's to them, it's riveting. It's just fascinating. It's it's spectacular. It's 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 mind blowing. So that's yeah, nice to talk. It's nice to talk about it. Yeah, it's interesting because you you literally got to be like a witness to history uh, in a lot of different a lot of different eras, and uh, yeah, that's the amazing part about being able to serve. You know, no matter what role you play, you you're 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 participating in history in many ways just by by being ex being an extension of policy. Um, I also heard you got a lot of injuries early on in your army career, and, and that was yeah. something you with throughout your time in, right? Yeah, man. You know, I tell you, people always ask me about uh, to like write a book about the military. You know, my military experiences, and, and never will I, because they think that. I think the perception is that it was an easy go. You know, that I just breezed through that. You know, this illustrious special ops career. But damn, man, the amount of hurdles. The amount, I could write a book on how many times I failed. That would be an interesting book. But the injuries, yeah. I uh, My first one, I mean, you know, when I was, uh, before I was 18, you get the regular injuries, you know, a broken bone and some, some road rash, those kind of things. But I'd never been hurt. Uh, and the first time I was hurt was in jump school. I was a toe jumper. Uh, my second jump at jump school where the static line went under my reserve, around my arm, pulled me. I was one of the first ones out, and that's Friar drop zone. That's, like, I think it's like a minute and a half long drop zone. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, but I was one of the last ones to land because I was towed behind the C-130, and uh, it, thankfully it came loose. It came undone because there was no way I, I would have had to rain mind to like pull a reserve or anything like that uh when it came undone my shoot did deploy 
And I remember thinking, damn, I mean, it was going into shock quick because if the, I broke ribs, concussion, dislocated shoulder, and uh, pulled my bicep down in my forearm. So the pain was, was good enough to, you know, cause shock to set in. Uh, but it was still extremely painful. And it was such a foreign, foreign feeling, getting at, like a real injury, you know, not stubbing a toe or, you know, some, cutting off the end of your finger, but like a real injury. And um, that was the beginning of a, of a bunch of them. Uh, because I had a bunch of broken bones on that one. It was a bad time to get hurt, too, because it was 1983, and um, um, Martin Army Hospital in Fort Benning was jam-packed with all these guys from uh, Grenada. Yeah. You know, guys with real injuries, you know, like because uh, yeah. they did all the uh, airfield seizure jumps 450 feet above the ground. And, and, uh, and then I got um, – I, I blew out my knee once. Uh, and that, that pain was legit. You know, when you snap an ACL and you can hear yeah. when guys 50 yards away can hear that thing, yeah. that's legit pain. You know, that's pukey. Like, yeah, I'm going to vomit and I'm, I'm getting this, this hurts back. <laughs> yeah, I did that in high school. Uh, and then, I vomited all over the place. It was awful. Man, that's a, that's a tough injury. And it's a, it's a tough recovery. Um, because, you know, when they open that thing up, it's like construction work, man. They're in with, they're with DeWalt tools and stuff. Mm -hmm. So my, they, the way they fixed me was uh, center patella tendon. So that hurt too, because you got to take out those chunks of bone and stuff like that. Uh, but they were able to fix that up pretty good. And then I got called into work one day. Um, and I drive, I used to drive a dirt bike to, uh, to work through the, through the woods. And I T-boned a deer going about 50 miles an hour. I mean, I was, I was whipping through the woods. Uh, and that set me, that launched me pretty good. So more broken ribs. I hit a tree and I didn't know it at the time because of adrenaline. Um, but I walked over to my motorcycle and the handlebars were all bent in. And I knew I broke ribs because it was, those, you know, ribs are so painful to break. Man, that is a painful, painful break. You know, like I had broken legs and, and it wasn't bad because they're straight up you know, straight up the bone, but uh, the ribs, oh man, they suck. And then I try to uh, unbend my handlebars and I realized, holy crap, my shoulder is jacked up. So I had to get that uh, operated on. And then um, I had a, 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 well, I'm gonna call it a helo crash, just a hard landing, you know, when it lands sideways, they just, you know, just hard landing, that's all. Uh, and then a vehicle crash and, a, Cup, uh, and then um, there was a couple incidences back to back to back, and I didn't know it, but I blew my L five S one disc, and uh, that got you know when you blow a disc it just hurts, but after a bit then you start getting um, you know sciatica and it gets worse and worse and worse yeah. and worse. So I got that one done, and I tell when guys ask, hey man, I'm thinking about getting a discectomy. It's been bugging me for years. I'm like, bro, get that shit done, man. That is the easiest surgery I have ever had. That was that was that was like outpatient stuff, and that was in '97. I mean, I was out of the hospital the day the day after. I, I think I had to stay in the hospital one day for uh, like I don't know antibiotics or anti-inflammatories or something like that. And they said you can put your pants on, you can leave. And I was gone, man. So if there's people out there, you know that have that chronic discect uh, um, uh, uh, nerve pain, you know, uh, that sciatica, man, get that shit operated on because it, it, you, I did not know how bad I felt until I felt good with that. Right. That's the way so, so many injuries are too. It's like, you don't move, you don't realize how good you feel after or, or how bad you felt until after it's fixed and the pain's gone away yeah yeah i mean I, when i woke up in the recovery room i thought man this is a foreign feeling i feel good man i mean i was like my mood everything was like because i went a year and a half with that which a lot of guys do but it's like ah oh, more anti-inflammatories and let me go to the chiropractor shouldn't get to work you know i mean it's gonna it's gonna give you temporary comfort but 
but shit ain't gonna work. You gotta get that shit fixed. And and then, because I got the same thing in my neck. I've got degenerative spine, uh, herniated disc. But that one there, I opted not to get operated on because it doesn't bother me that much. My hands go numb when I sleep. So, you know, I have a problem sleeping. I have to sleep like a corpse. But getting, getting a discectomy or, or surgery on your neck is very invasive. They gotta go into the front peel all that stuff open and then work that that way. So it's fine. The next time it's not bugging me. I exercise it routinely. Mm -hmm. Now you're in your fifties now and, mm -hmm. and you know, any, anybody who goes to your Instagram account, you, your social media stuff, they see the stuff you're doing. I mean, you, you're, you're working in multiple planes with your movement. You move so mm -hmm. well. Um, was it always like that? Were, were you always able to move the way you did? Or after you got out, was there a period where you were kind of nursing things? And, and, and did you have to pick things up? Yeah, 100%. There was a, well, there was a time that when I retired. I, I, I've always been somewhat fit. I mean, well, not always. Let's say from age 16 on, you know, wrestling and stuff like that. <clears throat> um, and I tell you, the fitness thing, Man, as far as helping you recover from injury, you can't beat it. You know, because if I were out of shape during all those injuries, I would be an absolute wreck right now. You know, I would I would have been one of these disposable heroes who retires after 22, 23, 24 years and is barely able to walk. Um, so, but there was a time when I retired where I got lazy. I got lazy. I got bumped out. Uh, um, and thankfully, I had a, a reawakening. And I was able to um, rejuvenate and kind of jumpstart the system again. Uh, and I started following my own advice because I developed a system called combat strength training. And that was, I started developing it right when I retired, but I wasn't even following my own uh, advice. Uh, but about four years after I retired, I really started getting back into it again and mixing things up, moving around. Uh, and now it's all about, you know, motion is lotion. I had to put on my IG uh, profile, born in 1965, because that's the question everybody asks. Bro, how old are you? They'll, they'll still ask you, even though it's written right there. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I don't even like to think about it, you know, age thing, mm -hmm. because it's all about an attitude. You know, and if, you, if you're somebody who has been in a kind of a uh, – you know, a career that didn't that that didn't lead to a lot of pounding and, and uh, uh, a lot of mileage on the feet. Uh, you really have no excuse. You know, you should be fit until you the day you die. You know, a lot of us right. military guys, there, there's so much mileage and pounding, and you only have so much that stuff called cartilage. Um, so you you've got to get you've got to get smart about how you exercise. Unfortunately, I started getting smart about it before I retired because I ran into a trainer and he told me he said at some point you have got to think about self preservation and longevity. You got to think stronger longer. And thankfully, I was in my thirties then, and I went, you know what, dude is right, man, because I'm not thinking about that at all. I'm grinding. I'm jumping off of stuff. I'm jumping off of buildings and. You know, doing combat rolls and and maxing out lifts and you know running ten miles here and uh, just complete with complete disregard to health, just all ego stuff. So, you know, motion is lotion, mobility is survivability. You got to keep that stuff going. And so, I'm fortunate to have really good uh, functional flexibility, speed, quickness, strength, and uh, and like you said, in all planes of motion, dude. And I could go on and on about this, so I'm going to keep rambling for a second. Yeah. But uh, a lot of guys, they're they, couple things, couple faults with guys, guys when they work out. One is they live in a sagittal, sagittalistic world. It's a made up word. So sagittal, everything this way, bench press and curls and stuff like that. Everything's forward, Life, right? What's that? Everything's forward. Just, just, yeah, just everything's just forward. Yeah. forward back, so, they, right? mm -hmm. so everything's sagittal. So they live in a sagittalistic environment, but we don't live there on a day by day basis. Whether your life is in a tactical world or not, you know, life saving and ass kicking take place in the transverse plane, you know, all that rotation stuff. So, um, 
every day I do I do stuff, whether it's power or strength or speed, stuff from the transverse plane. And man, you know, I have passed that knowledge on to so many people, and they, they're pinging me years later, saying, bro, you have saved my life. I was a piece of shit. My back was out of whack. I couldn't move. My, I had all these muscular imbalances. My pelvis was out of kilter. You know, uh, but I am moving good now at, you know, 58, 62, whatever it is. Um, the other thing that guys neglect is they fall victim to a routine, you know, where they're doing the same thing uh, yep. day by day or week by week. And I like to say that routine is the playground of a dull mind. And that if you all, if all, if what you do is routine, you could fall into that rut of complacent adaptation where you're no longer, all you're doing is maintaining a, a couple movements. You're not, you're not making uh, improvements on any, uh, on any on strength or speed or anything like that. And eventually it's going to catch up. To you. Plus, if it's routine and you don't change stuff up, it's no good for your brain. I mean, strong body, strong mind. When you mix it up, you're exercising the brain as well. Yeah, I, you know, having been in the conventional military back in the 90s and the early 2000s, back then it was kind of like, all right, you go out, you run three miles. You, you do your push-ups, you do your pull-ups. You, you're, if you're weightlifting, you're doing bodybuilding stuff. And I think a lot of us fell into that that mistake of doing the same thing all the time because what we were training for, we were training for the PFT. We were training, right. training well on our physical test. We didn't really care about all the other stuff. Of course, we didn't want to fall out on humps. We wanted to do well on ranges and things like that. But we weren't training that stuff. And, uh, you know, I I wish I knew then what I know now, and I wish we had uh, methods of communication with people like you back then, because I think that I would have went through so many less injuries and so many less problems, and I would have been so much more prepared for the challenges that I was facing. At the time. Yep. Yeah, hundred percent. And so, I, and, and what I'm doing now is I'm still um, the 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 most fun I have working. See, it should be fun, you know. Working out should be fun. Uh, it should be interesting. It shouldn't be boring, it shouldn't be mundane. Uh, you shouldn't have to go, well, it's time for me to go to the gym. Here I go, you know, and, and go through some motion. One of the most, I, I train five guys every day. So that, that drives me, that gets me there. And um, it, so it, it's, it, it, uh, it starts my motivation process. Um, and my challenge is to challenge them. So to give them stuff that we haven't done before. And the funnest thing is, is trying to recognize voids. What do I suck at? What right. part of me have I been neglected? So I try to replicate a lot of real world movements. And I realized today too, I did something yesterday and I can't wait to talk to the guys I trained because I need to see if they're sore in the same spots. <laughs> because my, my back, is sore in but I mean good sore, you know, muscular sore. It's sore in different places um, than than you and, you, and usually I, I never get sore because I'm always mixing stuff up. Um, but it, I'm sore in different places right now, so I can't wait to see if they're the same because I came up with a couple hump dangers yesterday. Uh, brings me up to another point. I did a uh, uh, motocross lesson. I used to ride a lot of motocross, and a couple weeks ago. There's a guy who, um, you know, I know through social media, he used to be a pro uh, uh, motocross racer, uh, Ian Treadle, and he uh, he got massive TBI, was in a coma for a long time from a bike wreck, but he trains dudes now, and he brought me out and trained me, and I rode for a couple hours on this track, and he would give me tips, and he said, man, tomorrow you're going to be sore, really bad. And he, uh, I saw him a couple of days later. He said, "Were you sore?" I said, "No, man. nothing was. Nothing was sore." <laughs> it, well, that's and that's great affirmation to know that I'm doing shit the right way. Additionally, mm -hmm. uh, like I don't pound pavement anymore. I don't go around and run five miles. But I, my system says to work in anaerobic chunks in circuit to near metabolic threshold to meet an aerobic goal. So you're keeping you're keeping the chassis moving for like 35 minutes. Uh, so you're you're getting that cardio in without having to pound the pavement. Right. Uh, and last year I went to the beach with my wife and I said, you know what? I'm going to go for a run. I've been for a jog in years. 
And I ran four miles and there was nothing. There was, no, there was nothing there. Uh, so once again, good affirmation. You know, it's like, all right, good. I'm doing the right shit because I'm not freaking smoked from going out of jog. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I want to ask you, because you mentioned that you had an awakening uh, after you'd gotten out. You sat around for like four years, kind of kind of not not really knowing what you were going to do. What, what was it that caused that awakening in you? Well, um, I, I don't discuss it too much because I'm given, when I talk about this, um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm shorting folks of the real story behind it because there's, there was so much behind this. But I ran into, um, and I didn't know it, and a lot of guys suffer from this when they have a long career, but I, I, I would, ran into, a, I was uh, dealing with depression. Um, and, and it was, and I, I almost capitulated to, to darkness. I was, I was happy with being mediocre. I accepted, I mean, it wasn't like I was going to kill myself because I had no kids. So I wasn't suicidal. But I was like, I'm just happy being a piece of shit. Uh, I'm just happy just being mediocre. Um, not happy, content. You know, just accepting mediocrity and almost capitulated just to say, you know, fuck it. I'm just not going to do anything. I, I have no goals, no aspirations, nothing. Um, and it, this went on for years. This is years. This, this, this wasn't like a couple week thing. Um, it, and it was, I, I can't explain how freaking bad it was because uh, I was in a bad relationship. and. The partner in this relationship was addicted to prescription meds. Uh, and when, when you're on prescription meds and you're abusing them, you know, it's chemistry. People need prescription meds. I get that. But if you, it's chemistry. So you're talking millions, you know, you're talking, it's a balancing act. Plus there's counseling that goes along with that stuff. And you, you have to abide by that regimen. Otherwise it's useless. You're just, a, you're just a fucking junkie, but a legal junkie because there's a, some freaking psychologist, not a psychiatrist, psychologist doling that shit out. Um, and it, it got to a point where this partner of mine, there was no more connection between the neuroreceptors. It was all darkness. You know, it was all um, uh, a, a very delusional, very uh, paranoid. Uh, and it, it, was, it was just, it was, just horrible. It was every freaking day. It was almost every minute of every day. Uh, and I lived in a bonus room above my garage for almost almost five years. I lived in, in a bonus room, little teeny room. But I had to stay there for my kids. Say. Uh, that was, you know, that was what drove me to stay in that. But I, I my son at the time, you know, little boys are just so freaking sweet, man, you know. And my kid at the time was super freaking sweet kid. He's probably five. Uh, and we're up in my bonus room watching something, I don't know, TV, whatever. It's just a show. And uh, I was smashed out of my mind. It was probably eight at night, but I was drinking, you know, in excess. Uh, it was every day. I would drink all day long. It wasn't, you know, all day long I would drink, all day. Um, and I told my son, oh, back up a step. It's dark outside, and, and a little screech owl landed right on my window. And he, he's facing this way, the window's over here. And I said, James, look at the window. And he looks over and he, I could see his eyes, you know, just go, because it's right in front of us, you know, this little screech owl, it's cool. It's getting lit up by this, uh, 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 this, this uh, lamp shade that's right by the window. Um, but, you know, I was living vicariously through him and I, I told him, I said, hey, James, I, I, I don't just love you, I am in love with you. And he started crying, you know, it was very, like, he got that, you know what I mean? He understood that. I mean, that little brain processed that. Um, but I put him to bed and I realized, man, I have got to be, you know, I've got to be, I got to be super dad for this kid forever. You know, I've got to do this. So I, um, back to the running thing again. I, I put up my running shoes right by my bed. Put my put my running uh, shorts out or whatever, just PT clothes, and put on my uh, charge my i my uh, iPod, and uh, set my alarm for early. Uh, got up, chugged water, and went for a run. No plan. Ended up being I 
10 or 12 miles. It was, it was like, wow. it was like an hour and 20 minutes, this run. And I felt good. I mean, I was hoping. It. Um, and I come back and, and I'm pretty out of shape at that point. I think it's point too, because I'm not working out the way I was supposed to. Uh, I come back in my driveway and I called the house. It was that, I called it the house where dreams go to die. So I stayed in my driveway and I was starving. I was that run. I was just starving. But I stayed in my driveway for about another hour and a half. And I had some dumbbells in the driveway. And I just did push-ups, sit-ups, presses for like another hour and a half until I almost passed out. But it was that that jump start right there kind of rejuvenated. It reminded me who the hell I am. You know, this is who you are. You can get up at any freaking moment and run 10 miles, you know, on your on your worst day. And I remembered you know who i was at that point and i i i, I said man i can i can accomplish i can i can accomplish this. and i had no idea what i could accomplish but i said man i could i could do things i could i could make a good life for me i am going to do my best to make lemonades out of lemons because that's all i had at the time the lemons and it was the same day i was, I was so smoked the same day because I got in my car, and I was driving to town to get some meat because I didn't want to go inside of the house. And uh, I did some errands, this and that. And um, now it's about 11 in the morning. And one of the local cops called me and he called me. I uh, said, hey, uh, can I talk to you? And I said, sure. He says, I'm at your home. So I went to my home and he's in the driveway. He says, hey, man, I, uh, I, ran, in, I ran into uh, your wife and she's stoned out it was like 11 stoned out of her mind incoherent here and this and that and the cops have been to my house about five times on you know because of reports that i'm bugging the house and all the the, the, the uh protecting uh, uh boards for the light switches were taken off and she's showing them how i'm bugging the house because there's blue washers and all this stuff but they've been in my house five times and they knew they knew me they knew who i, I was and, uh this one cop said hey uh you need to get the fuck out of here. And I looked at him like, and I said, what? He says, the kids will understand. They will get it. Kids are resilient. You need to save yourself and you need to get out of here. Bro, I just freaking broke down like I was a schoolgirl. I broke down. I was like, holy shit. Somebody freaking understands what's going on? There's no way. Because I was all alone. Nobody. Nobody. So I had that good one. Him telling me, get the hell out. He's like giving me permission, you know? And, um, the weight that was lifted off me, this is five years. It, it was bad before that, but five years was horrible, horrible. Um, and that day I went and, and looked for a uh, place and I found one that was 500 yards away from my house, just a little condo. They moved all my shit that day. I was like, holy oh, crap. This, this is the beginning. This is the, this is the beginning. This is the new, I had to start like all over again. I was 48 years old. I had to start it all over again. That was uh, almost it was about almost seven years ago now. All oh, wow. Yeah. But but the thing is, you know, it's never too late to start to start life over, you know. So I, what I get with guys is I get rough patches. I get being miserable. I get depression. I get um, you know, uh, lack of confidence even, because I had that lack of confidence and lack of confidence in my ability as as a fucking human being, even. But so I, 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 you know what, too? If uh, if I were to change one thing about my life and my past, it would be absolutely nothing, because I am living my best life right now. And um, had I not gone through that crap, I would not be the person who I am today. And it, it pains me when I say that because. I would hate to put anybody else through that again, and I would hate to put myself through it again, but I would absolutely 100% do all that shit again, 100%. Uh, yep, 100%. Because I, I, I like that I am the best version of me now, and the relationship that I'm in, it's, 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 uh, yeah, it's really good. Everything's good. I'm at the top, I'm at the top of my game right now. That's a, that's absolutely amazing. And <clears throat> the thing is, there's a lot of guys with similar stories out there as far as being in mm -hmm. partnerships where that are so bad 
that they they think they're going insane. Like you think you're crazy. You think yeah. you're nuts because because you think it's your fault. You think you're doing yep. something wrong. And the thing is, because I, I was in a similar situation, uh, really, really bad partnership. And then somebody, somebody like cleared my eyes and I literally packed my shit in the garbage bags, moved out, lived in my car for a while and, and did the same thing. And you're right. When you make that decision, it's like a new beginning and you could do absolutely anything. And, and I wish... I, yeah. I wouldn't wish it on anybody, but I wish more guys could come to that kind of epiphany. Right. Yeah. I, uh, and you know what? Um, a, a lot of them do. Uh, and, and I am very fortunate to have a platform, you know, like, like social media. I have, a, I have a pretty broad base. I mean, it's pretty extensive. So I am able to, um, I'm, able to I'm able to do that. I'm able to help guys out. You know, uh, be, because of that, because of that footprint I have on social media. So, and, and a lot of them, a lot of them, they'll just watch something like this right here. You know, they'll watch a podcast that I'm doing. And all they write in is, hey, thanks. That's it. And that's fine. Because I know that either small or grandiose, I help that dude out in some way. And uh, it's very, it's very fulfilling. You know, you get a real good sense of accomplishment from that right there. Yeah, when, uh, just being two years old. When, when did you realize that you had that kind of power with the social media? Because um, because you're not Man. from. Can you can you hear me, brother? Yep, I was waiting for you to finish. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry about that. Um, I was going to say, when did you realize you had that kind of power with the social media? Because you're not from the social media generation, right? It's, it was probably something new and foreign to you at first. When, when did you realize you could pick up that phone and, and do that? Well, I got into the social media game late. And, I, and initially, I just felt like another, you know, social media douchebag until I figured out how to use it. Um, and then, you know, I was, I'm a YouTuber. And what the YouTube started doing just motivated me. That was it, you know, just feel good, motivation. It was like, uh, uh, hey, thank you. thanks for putting out those vids. You motivated me, gave me a different way to train. Then I started putting out the workout stuff. Uh, and then I realized, okay, so that's, that's where I live on social, is all positive message. And there's nothing visceral, there's nothing true, there's nothing. That's also a reflection of that person. When they're putting out negative crap, on the interweb, dude, that's with intent, man. That's that's with free, that, you know, that's with intent to help to hope that others feel bad in the process. So I, I want to make sure that the message is positive. So for the longest time, it was like, hey, man, great content and uh, great uh, for uh, you know motivation. It's uplifting. But the first time I talked personal, like about depression, was on the Joe Rogan podcast. And he's got a substantial platform and a substantial following. And that's when I really realized, holy crap, man, because my, man, my shit blew up after that. It blew up. And I'm still, I could get off right now and look at IG or Facebook messages and have guys thank me for doing that podcast right now. It's still every day. This was last March. This is almost a year ago. So they're still watching that. Um, and now the challenge is to keep up with the correspondence, you know, even if it's just acknowledging that I read, you know, send them horns up, something like that, uh, because there's, uh, it used to be hundreds and hundreds during the day. Now it's still hundreds and hundreds during the week, but I'm still able to, you know, I spend time in the morning and at night on that social just to answer guys and just to give them a rock and roll, you know, horns up, whatever. It's just as simple as that. Just, I, I, cause I realized too, that that matters, that matters, you know, that given just to give, given a dude and you have no idea, you have no idea, man. Cause a lot of guys I, I helped out, they say, Hey, can, uh, can I come to your gym and work out with you too? Which is a great thing. I love doing that. I, I bring guys to my gym all the time. Uh, they always ask, can I get one day of working out with you? I go, hell yeah, bro. <laughs> come on. 
Because sometimes people, all, all they need is just that one good day. It's that jump start. It's like going for that run. Um, right. <clears throat> so uh, I, I like to know that I am, for, for some reason, able to do that, able to pass on this positive vibe and positive attitude. I tell my wife all the time, I go, Rebecca, I'm helping out so many people. I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea. I have no idea. She goes, yeah, just keep being you. You know, she, she says, you have a hard time faking. So I'm like, all right. Because I'll link up with guys that can come to my gym, and you'll, I'll know a, you know, a piece of, you know, they're, they're bummed out. They're depressed after they got out of the military. And I'll start hearing their backstory, and I'm going, oh, my God. Dude, your life has sucked. Wow. I mean, when people piss and moan about the most trivial shit, I think about guys like this, you know, who are brought up in orphanages and, and, and they were bad and they were beaten and they're, they're, both their parents died of cancer. They were 14. Uh, they went into the military and then they got out and then they had a horrible relationship and then they had cancer and were able to beat it. And this is all the same person, you know? And there's tons of people I meet like that. There's tons of them, you know? So, um, uh, when people hit me up with trivial shit, like I remember this one guy, he hit me up. He goes, "Hey, I'm bummed out. I appreciate you disclosing what you did on, on uh, the JRE podcast uh, because I, I'm having some depression and I hate it because I have kids who love me and a supporting wife." And I told him, "I said, bro, fuck you. Snap the fuck. If you have kids who love you and a supporting wife, put a rubber band around your neck and snap the fuck out of it. Sorry." But you've got a great thing going on. Don't jack that up, man. Go work out. Go get yourself, you know, a, 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 a good meal or something and find a hobby. But hell no. I, you know, I, there's some guys I don't want to hear. I don't want to hear about it because people have it. A lot of people have had it pretty freaking bad, man. You know, um, and, and then you look on the other hand, I know guys who have lost several limbs in the military. And, um, man, their attitude's out of this world, you know? They're, they're on top of the world. Like, ah, whatever, bro. I'm alive, and I'm, I'm able to read and still go fishing because I got this arm. And, you know, it's like, that's what bad looks like. Yeah. Right there. So if he can do that shit, why can't you? <clears throat> My doorbell just rang. You got to get it? No, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. Um. What I was going to say is like, you know, the other thing is, is, I mean, when you think about all the people who have ever lived on this planet and all the different times and places throughout history and like the, the fact that, that, you know, 150 years ago, kings and queens weren't living as well as most of us are today. Like we've got more technology in our pocket that it took, that it took to put a man on the moon, even if your life completely sucks. I mean, there's still something there to keep you going, right? They're, they're, they're banging again. I, I gotta get Go ahead and grab it, brother. Go ahead and grab it. Oh, oh nice. 20 pounds, of, 20 pounds of venison. Oh, nice. That's awesome. That's yeah. outstanding. So, I'm sorry, kings and queens? Yep. Yeah, what I was saying is that you know, if you think about the fact that, I mean, even like 100 years ago, uh, I mean, kings and queens weren't living as well as like the average person in America today. Like the, the things we have in our lives, the, the opportunity we have in front of us. I mean, being able to start a business over social media, being able to, to communicate with people, being able to, to learn about all the things we get to learn about. I mean, literally you can learn about anything in seconds. Like it's all in your pocket, right? And yep. uh, even if your life sucks, I mean, there's still a lot of opportunity out there to turn things around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and some people just need, because um, there's a lot of people who just live in, you know, they live in their little bubble. And, um, and you know, they're pretty content. But they have no idea what they can be or what they can succeed in because nobody has, uh, nobody has really, really, they haven't been given any guidance you know, or they haven't been given permission to be a really good version of themselves. Sometimes they need, they need permission, you know, uh, hey man, you could, you could, you could be something more than what you are right now. You do not have to pick that low hanging fruit. You know, there is opportunity out there. And sometimes it just starts with, you know, taking a night class or something like that. Just getting yourself a little bit more education. 
Yeah, I, I agree, hundred percent. You know, the uh, the other thing is um, that I noticed about you and what you've done, you've got this this amazing and remarkable balance to your life too, because you have this intense training that you're doing. You have the, the, the whole physical thing. You have the, the fact that you're training others, but you've also, you started a new relationship. You've got a great wife. Um, you, you're a family man. And you know, how, how have you been able to, how were you able to move on from that bad relationship, start a new one and, and find happiness there? Bro, you know what? Um, <clears throat> I think people like me are at their happiest because they've endured that shit storm, you know? So uh, th when I go to my local pub or when people will say, how are you going? I never, I, I, I'm never one of these douchebags who goes, well, I'm vertical. Well, I'm still alive and still kicking. I always say, man, I am awesome. Always. And um, because, because that's kind of the way I feel, too. I can have a pretty poopy day, but I'm still awesome, man, because I, I know what shitty is. I know what it is. And I'm not talking just, you know, a lot of, plus, plus us military guys know what, you know, living in squalor feels like and being miserable and cold and hungry and tired and, and, uh, and, and, and cooking in the heat and all that stuff. You know, so we know what that is too. But um, I know what suck is. And the suck that I endured after military life was way more than anything that I had endured in the military. Way more. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, there, the, the balance is easy. You know, I, 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 I look forward to every tomorrow. Today. I look forward to every tomorrow. Um, I live by a couple of mantras too. Like one is you wake up in the morning, Jerry Rice, football player in the nineties, uh, all famer said, I will do today what others won't. So I can do tomorrow what others can't man. If you could say that every morning and think about that, dude, put that in your pipe and smoke it. Shit, man. You know? Uh, mm -hmm. and then I want to look forward to the, to the, to the tomorrow, you know, the night before. So I, I, uh, I, 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 li I still live by blank words like I did in the military. You know, I, I, I jot out a couple notes. These are the things I want to accomplish in the day. And right first thing in the morning, accomplish these things. And I have minutes. I literally have minutes during the day. I have no time because I have two, two, three of my own businesses. And I got six or seven side projects. Um, I can't even keep track of them. So I, my big whiteboard keeps track of those, you know, all the big stuff that I'm supposed to do, all my um, implied tasks. <clears throat> my little whiteboard are the small intermediate tasks that I want to accomplish during the day. Uh, but I want to make sure that I look forward to the next morning. Think about, you know, I'll get in up. I'll look at the weather and go, oh, man, it's supposed to be raining. It'll be nice to hear the rain in the morning. You know, I, I mean, nobody wants to hear the rain in the morning, but the thing is, if you look forward to it, it's like, oh, that's rain. I'm inside and I'm not wet and it's raining and it's cold now. Uh, and another thing I look forward to is I want to beat my wife out of bed so I can bring her a cup of coffee. You know, so that's a, that's accomplishment number one for the day right there. And then I want to, you know, it's, it's little shit. I mean, I want to make bacon and make my dogs a slice each. Uh, because, dude, they're just so freaking fired up. Oh, Dad's making bacon for us. You know, and then get them on a walk. Uh, because... You know, I'm their, I'm their, I'm their dude, man. I'm the dog's dude. So uh, get them on a walk and you know see the world through their eyes. Uh, but yeah, man, I love. I, I don't necessarily like to grind, and I'm getting. To be honest with my job, I, this year it hit me. I'm getting worn out, man. I'm getting worn out because I've been pushing hard, doing like four courses a month for the past several years. And a lot of that's because of alimony. <laughs> so I've got to maintain that pace for a few more years. Um, but next year, I'm, I, I've decided I'm going to dial it back, do fewer courses because they're, they're smoking me. I had pneumonia this past summer. Pneumonia. Because I ran into exhaustion. And then pneumonia. And because uh, I was doing back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back courses. Uh, lost 10 pounds. I have nothing on me, Luis. Nothing. There's no, I mean, it's all just skin around my whole body. Right. But, um, so next year I'm going to dial back and I'm going to try to leverage, you know, uh, 
like social media and, and the interweb and uh, do some other things. I got some other plans and then develop more product, do some more writing because I write for uh, Athlon Outdoors for uh, Combat Handguns and um, Ballistic Magazine. So do some more of that stuff too. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, I know we're coming up on, on time here and uh, I want to ask you this because, you know, like I said, those segments that you make on Instagram, they're, they're awesome. Uh, you know, the, the, the personal, personal protection agencies yeah. are so helpful. In your opinion, what, where are most men most unprepared? Uh, whether it be in protection of their house, whether it be in, in trying to figure out um, egresses, things like that. Where, where should people start? when it comes to stuff uh, like Yeah, I got it. I'm going to write it down because I got a backstory on it first. Um, I think this is an easy one for me to answer, but I'm going to still get a little bit long-winded. So, uh, be the agent in charge of your own executive protection detail is the subtitle of my book, Sentinel. Uh, and so, you take what an executive protection detail and you whittle it down to micro level. What can every day Joe Schmo, me, you, the people next door do that an executive protection detail does on a micro level to help make sure that your you, your wife, your family, your kids are uh, just safe. <clears throat> and and I'm not paranoid. You know, there's no paranoia here, guys. When I post stuff like these Sentinel sermons, uh, these Sunday Sentinel sermons on the IG, guys say, "Bro, you're so freaking paranoid," you know. And I'm like, uh, <clears throat> "I'm glad that I live in Canada and I don't live in unsafe America." Like, hey, man, I'm talking fire, natural disaster, power outage, that kind of shit. You know, not just zombie apocalypse and um, a, 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 a gang of thugs at the Walmart. I'm talking not, and terrorists. I'm talking just everyday crap, man. Could be falling down the steps. So um, the answer is now we human beings in my, this is my opinion, are kind of devolving. We're relinquishing our natural defense mechanisms as a human being, mobility, uh, intuition, situation awareness. So what I tell you guys, where you start, number one, because get, oh, it drives me crazy. When I see a dude walking up the road with his wife, he's not on the roadside, he's on the in, inboard side of the road, he's not holding her hand, He's wearing flip-flops, and he's got his phone down here. He's in 45-degree syndrome. I'm like, that's not a dude right there. That's not sentinel. So yeah. number one, situation awareness. It's as simple as that. And, 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 you know, when I'm in my home, I'm in the white. So Cooper's color code, white to red. You know, we're red, you're fighting for your life. White is zombie mode. When I'm out, as soon as I go out, I'm in the yellow. I don't need to be in the orange like an executive protection detail is. That's exhausting. But just in the yellow. You know, just aware. So that's where guys need to start. They don't need to go out and get a bunch of guns and, and become a ninja because that takes a, that's a lifetime. But right. situational awareness and, and intuition is built into your hard drive. Just don't relinquish that. You know, <clears throat> rejuvenate that. Rekindle or restart that fire. You know, put some kindling on that fire on that situational awareness fire. Because that's the one thing that can keep you safer more than anything. You know, and it, you know, the, the old lady who, who, who her cars run away because she hit the gas pedal instead of the brake. Uh, it, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, it could be, you know, a, you know, a patch of ice that nobody's seen because everybody's looking down their phones. Whatever it is, just situationally aware. Because, uh, man, at the end of the day, that can mitigate a lot of <clears throat> burglaries, muggings, uh, uh, home accidents, accidents out in the street, uh, accidents in your car. I mean, people are switched off in their car. Man, they're, they're, I, I assume right now that most people driving are distracted. That's my assumption. Most. I'm going to say most are distracted. You know, when you, when you look into other cars, most people are on a cell phone. They got it in their hand. Even if they're driving, it's in their hand. You know, but when you hit a stoplight, everybody's looking at their cell phone. So I guess I'm the one on security because I'm not. I'm the only one on security right now. But uh, yeah, that's my advice. Stay situationally aware when you're outside of your home. 
That's awesome advice. And uh, you said the book, uh, the, the Sentinel book, where can people find that book? It's on all the usual suspects, you know, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, that kind of thing. I'll, I'll, I'm going to order some more too at the beginning of the year so I can have signed copies that I can send people. Awesome. Yeah. We'll get the links to that up on the show notes for this episode. And, uh, you know, I mentioned your Instagram. What's your YouTube channel called? Pat Mac. Pat Mac. And, and your, your Instagram is PMAX, right? T Max, yep, T M A C S I N C, T Max Inc. T Max yep. Inc. I gotta say, your Instagram. Yep. And then I also have uh, my other business, Combat Strength Trading. Okay, awesome. And, and does that have its own account as well? Yep. Awesome. And, and what what is that? Uh, it's the uh, it's the fitness uh, program that I that I go by, and, and I've got a uh, an ebook and an online course and stuff like that. So there's a website combatstrengthtraining.com. There's a Instagram combat strength training, uh, Facebook combat strength training. We'll, we'll get all that. We'll get all that up there. Yeah, I have to say, your your Instagram is is. I mean, it's it's one of the best accounts out there as far as training goes, as far as motivation goes. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Love checking it every day. It's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a great account to follow. Right on. Thanks, man. Yeah, I have fun with it. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm very, very careful about, um, understand. Yeah, because we, once again, because we've devolved, our attention span has been reduced. Like kids, attention span now is less than that of a goldfish. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm careful, you know, I make sure that messages are short, clear, and concise, and that you, as soon as it comes on, it's captivating. So you're seeing, feeling information or hearing it uh, right away. Yeah, I'm careful about it. No, you're, you're really great about that. And uh, the segments, I mean, they're short, but they're so helpful. And, and uh, there's, there's a lot of great stuff on there. Um, well, Pat, number one, I want to thank you for coming on and, and sharing all this stuff with us and sharing your story. Uh, number two, I want to let everybody out there know, you know, Pat's done a lot of work here. He's, he's put a lot of great stuff out in the world. Definitely go and check him out. And uh, beyond that, you know, take some of the lessons from this episode. There's always a potential for a new start. There is always a potential to live your best life. And I think that's the big message here. Uh, Pat's doing it. He's, he's pushed forward through his own trials and tribulations. And you can do that too. It's just going to take a bit of effort here, right? Um, yeah. Pat, anything, any words for the audience out there? No, I appreciate the audience listening. That's it. And uh, yeah, man, I thank you for having me on. It's been good. Awesome. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for listening. We'll be back at you later on this week with some more awesome content. Get out there and live your best lives while you can. This is Chris and Pat, and we are out.